The area where we've already lost the game is with ZFS compatibility. So you create a disc or ZFS, um, a Z pool on a disc with Oracle Solaris uh, 11 Express, you can't import it. Uh, on you haven't the created computer. a new compatibility because the same thing with NetBSD, whoever else uses ZFS. Uh, Illumos and the, and the contributors behind it, for example, Nexenta, have said that they will release new ZFS versions, and it is likely that it will break compatibility. So if um, Oracle did subsequently release the source, um, things might get messy. I mean, it, the, the future is not written yet. We're just going to have to wait and see, really. Is there no point in trying to go down the main tree? It's just too much of an engineering effort. I mean, we've got ZFS, and ZFS is great. Um, BRTFS, ButterFS, I think they're calling it. Um, yeah. It's still nowhere near uh, down the line that, that, that ZFS has reached. And, and ZFS has a particular set of um, features that make it suited to particular um, environments and workloads, like the ZFS intent log being able to be popped on a solid state disk, for example. Have I understood correctly? Is, is the intention of Illumos to uh, more or less track what Oracle does with OSNet? Then, when Oracle does something, to do the equivalent in Illumos? Is that the general intention? Um, no, actually. Um, we have no idea uh, what Oracle are doing. Um, they have a very closed uh, development model normally, and an OSNet has fallen under that closed development model. So, we don't see what's going on. Um, the one area where we do see what's going on is in uh, bug reports. Um, not all of them are made public, but the ones that are made public, we can see, oh, there's that bug, and uh, check to see if it existed in Illumos. But really, Illumos is going its own direction, and it's doing its own thing, and it's overhauling systems, and uh, it, is, it is a fork. Illumos is a proper fork. Okay, in that case, how do you hope to keep up with the whole thing? Um, as, as a viable, well, we, uh, you know, something that people might choose to use instead of Oracle? Well, we're, we're not really uh, there. T <coughs> the, the decision shouldn't be, do I run Solaris 11 Express or do I run Open Indiana? Uh, typically, um, if you're in an enterprise, it's going to be Solaris 11 Express because you're buying hardware, you want a support contract, um, you're going down the commercial route. Open Indiana doesn't have commercial support available for it. Um, we're chasing after the Linux end of the market, and we have features that they won't have for years. So it's it's a different kind of argument, and uh, we can't compete with the thousand odd developers that Oracle have working for them. Um, the the commits that fly into Solaris are just huge. Um, but the good news is, uh, Sun invested all this money and all this talent in major subsystems um, that have been coming to flourishing over the past five plus years, like Crossbow, Comstar, um, ZFS itself, uh, all these great technologies. All these projects are done. They're finished. They're, they're in the source code, and that's why Solaris 11 is soon to be released. Um, there are no major projects that I'm aware of uh, being worked on, although Oracle are very quiet about this, but there were none when OSNet was open that um, changed the game. Essentially all the hard graft's been done and we have the, the good stuff and what comes on top is going to be more incremental rather than revolutionary, um, I think. But okay. we'll have to wait and see. In your opinion, how much momentum is there behind Open uh, Indiana and uh, Illumos at the moment? I tried to find out myself this morning by just rummaging around the web. And I just couldn't get a clear indication. I couldn't find much evidence of much activity. The activity primarily happens on IRC, and it is, pardon me, a little bit slow um, because uh, we're still getting things like continuous integration set up, and there have been big pauses to do big projects like uh, the Illumos integration. Um, Illumos itself has a lot of people actively working on it, uh, companies like Joint and um, Nexenta are funding developers who are working on it. So uh, if you look at the commit tree, uh, um, I think I have Wi-Fi. I can actually show you. Um, uh, so here is the, um, 
the repositories list we've got at HG Media. Here's the Lumos gate. Um, here are all the changes. And um, these are peer reviewed uh, changes that are uh, going into the, um, the source tree. So these will have been grafted and worked on for, for quite long periods of time. Um, the mailing list as well, if you look on Lumos Dev, it's got a lot of traffic. Um, people are basing their businesses on this stuff. And Exenta are quite a large storage vendor now. Um, they depend on Lumos um, for their business. Uh, Joint, similarly, they're funded <coughs> by Intel. Their entire cloud computing stack is built around Solaris Technologies. And um, not Solaris 11 Express. They've actually customized the open uh, source components that were provided to them. And now they're no longer getting that. So their only hope is with Lumos. So there are real financial reasons for some quite large companies to uh, make sure that Lumos succeeds. Um, Open Indiana itself, um, it does have some bottlenecks uh, in terms of uh, developer time. Um, as I mentioned, I run a full-time business and as project lead for Open Indiana, I find that the pace of development of Open Indiana is sometimes held up by how much time I've got free, uh, but we are addressing that. And we have had a steady flow of new contributors joining the project, and it takes time for them to get up to speed. Um, once we've got the continuous integration and the build systems in place so that people can just package install oi-dev-build-system or something um, and get hacking, that's when really the pace of improvement will pick up. And also we had this hump with Lumos integration. Once we're over that, the development build should um, pick up. And our aim is to leapfrog um, build 151A, which is Solaris 11 Express, to get up to build 160, which Oracle aren't making available, um, we'll be able to, to make that available in the near future. So. Okay, final question for now. Uh, if I wanted to be a contributor, but be able to make money out of it as a viable job, um, is, is that an idea I should, I should just forget about because it's impossible, or is it viable? It depends how you go about it. Um, an exenta are hiring if you wanted to uh, get a job with them. I suppose they, they might be able to fund some of your time working on it. Um, but really it would be down to you to find a way to commercialize it. But the source code is uh, it's out there for anyone to do with uh, as they please. So. Okay. Uh, Andrew? Uh, just a fun thing. Uh, have you got a, a hate time scales and I uh, saw in your head so when you would like to have the next release based on Lumos kernel? Um, we well, prefer not to go down that route to say, because you don't want to say it'll be released in April, but you'd like us to have... <laughs> we've got a DVD um, already, which was handed out at the SCALE conference in America, which is Open Indiana with the Illumos kernel in it. But the way this was constructed was we took build 148, uh, which doesn't have Illumos in, we rip selectively ripped out a few packages, and we selectively put in the Illumos ones. Um, we did not build the whole thing. Um, and it works okay, but it's uh, it's not proper integration, and that's what we're working on. Um, it did allow us to, to knock on the head a lot of bugs and issues with things like uh, system locales, um, which were reworked in, in Lumos. Um, in terms of time frames, it's going to be no later than April, and I would hope by the end of this month, if possible. Um, I mean, one of the core uh, release engineers for Open Indiana works at my company, Every City, and uh, you know, I am going to commit time to make sure that this, this happens. So. And that this is one of the amazing things, is it, it only takes a small number of people to do a tremendous amount of work uh, if they have the time and if the time is chosen wisely. Uh, yep. Do you have any rule of thumb for what makes it Solaris? -y? I mean, you've already said you'd like to make it more friendly to GCC compiling and perhaps make Exim an alternative to send mail. And I could think of several other examples. Um, but, you know, so in, in the future, when someone comes up with great innovation X in, in the Linux world, and you want to port it to Open Indiana, is it going to be less Solaris and more generic open source Unity Linux system? It depends what it is and where it fits in the stack. Um, if it's quite a low level thing, um, then and it has an impact on the Solaris 
ness of the operating system, then then you know as as project lead, I want um, Open Indiana to be true to the Solaris tradition as much as possible. Uh, I guess respectful of it.